Now, in the last bit of this, or the next bit of this demonstration, I'm going to show you what happens in subduction zones. And again, remember this model is very simplified, but it does illustrate some of the things you get. So a subduction zone is where a plate, and remember the plate has got some strength, is going down into the mantle, deep down. So this time we're not looking at weights and adjustments of a few kilometers or tens of kilometers. We're looking at really deep effects. So I'm gonna try and simulate a subduction zone and it looks like that. And I can feel the buoyancy. Now this is tricky because actually plates are denser than the mantle they're going into. So this is not perhaps a very good analogy, right? That's why I have to press, I have to force the plate down. Normal oceanic plates are so dense that once they start going, they'll carry on going. But there are some things to notice. Notice that I'm, in this artificial example, applying the weight with this glass stick just here, but the plate is bent, okay? So actually the plates bend quite smoothly as they go down into a subduction zone. All of this would be moving to the right, okay? But the other thing is, what you've got here, look at the general level of the plate. You've got a peripheral bulge there. So when you have subduction zones, what you have, you have to try and imagine another plate here, but this is going to be a very deep trench in the actual ocean. Yeah, this is actual seawater here, like the Marianas Trench is about nine kilometers deep. As you move out this way, you actually find that the plate is slightly, it's still below water, but the sea level is quite slightly higher than usual because of the uh, elasticity of the plate there. Okay, so now I'm going to show some effects that might shed light on some of my own research and they're not so, such standard effects that you would see discussed in textbooks. But I want us to just reflect on what happens if we manage to subduct a continent instead of an ocean. Now, continents are buoyant. Look, this is like a continental plate. It's buoyant. It doesn't want to go down. But sometimes it's attached to dense material and it goes down. Okay, like that. So this time I want to just spend a few minutes simulating an actual continent. Now, these are very dynamic situations. The, the load, the weight carrying it down, could, under certain circumstances, become detached. And then this stuff wants to come back up. So the first simulation we'll see is I'll just let go. So watch. Okay. Can you see it's come up like that? We'll try it again. Actually, now I'll adjust it a bit for reasons you'll see in a minute. Right. Up. right I'm going to push it right down to the bottom of the tank there. So that's quite deep. And we know these things can go down to 100 kilometers or something like that, if not more. Okay. So... That's a bit of an extreme geometry. Let, let's try it again. One more time. Watch what happens. So it sweeps up. It's got to displace the water sideways. All right. Now, actually, in this scenario, that water is actually mantle material. So it's quite hard to displace it. It will go a lot more slowly than, than that. But watch this. Supposing... You, you hadn't drawn your attention to the left-hand side, but the left-hand side, it was right up against the side of the tank. It couldn't move sideways. But let's just suppose it might move sideways. Let's give it a bit, literally, a bit of room for manoeuvre. And then it has a choice as to how to come up. Whoops. Well, there you can see it's done it already. It was too eager to get up before I let it go. Watch now. Let go. Now, it hasn't just come up. It's gone sideways. So... The buoyancy force has been turned into a sideways movement. And this, many scientists believe, can happen in mountain belts. Some of the sideways movement is due to just plates colliding. But some of it is due to this. Okay. So that can have quite big effects. What's happening here? Let me do it one more time. What's happening here at this right-hand end of the tank is translating into effects over here that could be 100 kilometers away. So there's quite some quite large scale effects going on. Can we put any variations on that idea? Yes. So I've said to you that 
a mountain belt is where plates collide and one of them to an extent goes on top of the other that's a very long story cut short but we'll try a bit of that so let's do, this is a minor variation on that idea so now this almost is a chance to revise some of the basic ideas so there's a few things going on here now the the foam rubber is water saturated so it's got some undulations for that reason um the mat here the plate is double thickness but can you see that because it's actually not very weighty the root is rather broad and shallow we could add a rock for effect and then we get more of a root so this is a bit like the Alps or any other mountain belt. So now we've got a sticking up bit, we've got a fallen basin, and we've got a root. And the width of the root depends on how strong the rocks are. Now in mountain belts like the Alps, there are places where we've managed to push the continental crust right down. So let's try the experiment again and see what happens. Not an awful lot, we'll do it one more time. So it basically has to move up. And it's doing it rather slowly, it has to displace a lot of mantle. But now here's the trick. Now I know, and it's difficult to make this model do it. When you're making mountain belts, you're actually thrusting one plate beneath the other. And can you see that I can't make that happen because this is like a big thrust plane, but in this model, it's rather stiff it's difficult to move 